I have dollop tour dates to announce for the year 2024 of our Lord J Town. We have our 10th anniversary show coming up in Los Angeles on April 27th. Guests are Karen Kilgariff and James Adomian. And then we are going to Australia starting on May 13th in Perth, May 16th in Sydney, May 18th in Brisbane, May 20th in Canberra, May 22nd in Melbourne, and May 24th in Adelaide. You can get your tickets at dollappodcast.com. Attention all homeowners, this is Advanced Exteriors reminding you not to wait any longer to repair your roof from last year's storms. Your insurance company has a deadline, and missing it could mean missing out on thousands of dollars in benefits. Don't panic. Call Advanced Exteriors today. They're insurance experts that will help you handle your claim start to finish. Schedule your free inspection now and start your insurance claim before it's too late. Visit AdvancedExteriors.com. Remember, there's a backlog, so act fast. Advanced Exteriors providing you peace of mind. Hello, you are listening to The Dollop. This is an American history podcast that we do usually twice a week. Mm-hmm. Each week, I read a story to from American history to my friend... Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is about. And sometimes he's tired. Today, he's tired. <laughs> God, you want to look at a dude? I'll do one bottle. <laughs> people say this is funny? Not Gary, Gareth. It's Dave, okay. Someone or something is tickling people. Is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tickling Podcast. Okay. You are Queen Fakie of Made Up Town. All hail Queen Shit of Liesville. A bunch of religious virgins go to mingle. And do what? Pray. Hi, Gary. No. Nicely done, my friend. No. No. And there might be some hammering going on while we do yeah, this, Yeah, there's some construction happening. We didn't know this. We don't have a lot of time today because I'm getting on a plane tonight. So there might be some construction in the middle, in which case you just got to deal. Or you turn it off and you go, that sucked. Yeah. We could just pretend it's like a sound effect. The we chicken! Just... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Has inspired contributions to art, culture, cuisine, science, and religion. The, chi- the chicken. Just chicken. Just okay. chickens chicken. in general. Right, okay. Chickens were and still are a sacred animal in some cultures. The hen was a worldwide symbol of fertility. Eggs were hung in Egyptian temples to ensure a bountiful river flood. Eggs. Uh, yeah. No, that I makes mean, sense. It, it's just it's just thinking ahead. We got to start doing that in California. Get these eggs yeah. up. Get the eggs we up, need people. More bountiful rivers. Need rain. You just start hanging eggs around your house. Your neighbors are like, I don't know what's. It worked in Egypt, bro. I am the egg man. The rooster was a universal sign of virility. For the Romans, the chicken was a fortune teller. Can you imagine being in a time where someone's like, excuse me, chicken. What? Should I take this woman's hand or or should I go off on my own? Talk to me. (laughs) Well, I just had an interesting talk with the chicken. Chickens accompanied Roman armies and their behavior was carefully observed before battle. Chick... Uh, Leviticus, what's the chicken doing? Uh, sir, it's walking around and um, eating. Victory! Oh, good, we got a good feeling. Victory! A good appetite meant victory was likely. According to the writings of Cicero, when one a contingent of birds refused to eat before a sea battle in 249 BC, an angry consul threw them overboard. History records that he was then defeated. Jesus. Yeah. So don't fuck with the chicken. He sounds like a prick. The rooster plays a small but crucial role in the Gospels in help. That's the Bible. I don't know. I don't know where you're at with that stuff. I'm I'm knee deep in the Bible. In helping to fulfill the prophecy that Peter would deny Jesus, quote, before the cock crows. Hmm. Hmm. In the ninth century, Pope Nicholas I decreed that a figure of a rooster should be placed atop every church as a reminder of the incident. (laughs) <laughs> Which is why many churches still have cock-shaped weather vanes today. Yeah. Well, so that, it's time to get rid of those. Yeah. So Because that's out, stupid. It turns out those are religious. That's a shame. Yep. Uh, chickens were first domesticated not for eating but for cockfighting. Oh, okay. Until the advent of large-scale industrial production in the 20th century, the economic and nutritional combination of chickens was not much. People didn't really eat chickens that much. And just one day we were like, God, goddamn chickens. Getting hungry watching those two cocks fight. The male of the species can be a fierce fierce animal, especially when bred and trained for fighting. 
Nature armed the rooster with a bony leg spur. Humans have supplemented that feature with an arsenal of metal spurs and small knives strapped to the bird's leg. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, they strap metal things onto the bird. And they, they so they have a, they have like a natural in the back of their leg they have like a little bone spur thing that they can attack other uh-huh. roosters with, but it, in cockfighting they'll put on like blades. What? Oh yeah, it's like they come armed, man. They'll not... fucking blade up a rooster's feet. A cockfighting's no, it's no joke, man. They come. I, I mean, I know it's fucking... no joke, but I didn't realize we were like turning them into like vampire hunters. Well, it's it's a fucking warrior pit. <laughs> Listen, I mean. Shit is real in there. Did you think it was like a boxing match? No, it's to the death, bro. Any, it's not. It's not super insane. It's not like a crazy battle. If you can easily take two hands and pull out one of the opponents, just okay. Very simply, that's a fair point. <laughs> I'm fucking king of the world. Get out of here, asshole. Wait. Oh shit. Can I have some seed? Cockfighting is illegal in the United States. Louisiana was the last state to ban it in not a 2008. Whoa. Yeah, they're cool. Jesus. Stay, staying up with the times, and I'm sure they're still pissed about it. And I'm sure they're still doing it. Yeah. Uh, it has claims to be the world's oldest continual sport. So the oldest... Suck it, discus. Right? Uh, and javelin. Artistic depictions of a rooster combatants are scattered throughout the ancient world, such as in the first century AD, mosaic adorning a house in Pompeii. Some pictures of chickens fighting. <laughs> the ancient Greek city of Pergamum. Established a cockfighting amphitheater. Oh my God! To teach valor to future generations of soldier. Are you ready to watch something weird? Are you ready to <laughs> flutter? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? No. Uh, get some rabbits. Let's have a gladiator fight a chicken. <laughs> no, we're not fighting each other. Get more birds. In 2004, when an interna- international team of geneticists produced a complete map of the chicken genome. Right? Mm-hmm. So they figured out how all the chickens started. Where they, they, yep. The chicken was the first domesticated animal. The genome map provided an excellent opportunity to study how millennia of domestication can alter a species. It started with the red jungle fowl from Southeast Asia, Whoa. which bred with three other species, which eventually led to the domesticated bird in America we see today. Is it, are they domesticated? Yeah, they're domestic. Yeah, they're domesticated. Just because they're I mean, easy I'm, to cage. They, domesticated doesn't just mean like they're kicking it in your house. Like, yeah, is no, also I don't. Like, I don't think it necessarily means that you sit. But isn't there? I mean, is it just that you simply can? They won't control leave. Control them. Like they're yeah. They're they just won't roll. Yeah, they're okay. your deal. Okay. <laughs> if you look it up in the dictionary, it says domesticated means they're your deal. Oh really? I think so. Now, Dave, I have a dictionary over here. Go. <sighs> Do you... Chickens started in India then moved across Mesopotamia, then to Egypt, where they were for eating and fighting. Then chickens made their way to Rome and into Europe. But when Rome fell, so did the chicken. Such a shame. Now, a lot of people don't remember that part of that. No, they don't. It's not, it doesn't come up in all the stories. No, they don't say chickens weren't built in And it. then Hannibal rolled in. Yeah. And then the chickens were like, I'm out of here, bro. Laters. Later. We have fallen. Chicken out. Some believe the Romans had farms set up to fatten up the chickens, but when the farms were gone, the chickens returned to the normal size. Uh-huh. That's the idea. Sure. Europeans arriving in North America found a continent teeming with turkeys and ducks for the plucking and eating. Archaeologists believe that chickens were first brought to the New World by Polynesians who reached the Pacific coast of South America a century or so before Columbus. Okay. Kind of. <laughs> we're getting, we're taking the, we're taking the chicken from the beginning of chicken to now. <laughs> and now we're in America. We okay. got the chicken into America. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, in the 20th century, chickens played a relatively minor role in the American diet and economy, although people did enjoy their eggs. Yep. The breakthrough for chickens was the fortification of feed with antibiotics and vitamins. Oh, here we fucking Which go. allowed chickens to be raised indoors. So, chickens need sunlight. To synthesize vitamin D, like all things do. But By the we, way, that was that was a thing that the coach of the 49ers, Bruce Walsh, used to do before Super Bowl games. Is he would make his he would take his team out of the hotel and make them walk around the hotel in the sunlight to get vitamin D. Smart. He was a winner. Uh, so through the Start first, doing that with me before dollars. You got it. That's Thank actually you. a good idea. So through the first decades of the 20th century. Uh, Chickens spent their days wandering around a barnyard, you know, pecking for food. Sure. But now they can be sheltered from weather and predators 
and fed a controlled diet in an environment designed to have a minimum of distractions of antibiotics and just living. So now that they just, now they're just these things in a, in a warehouse and they just can't move because there's so many. Of them. Oh, now? Yeah, yeah. Like factory farming. Yeah. Factory farming. That's what arrived. And the chicken was transformed from like yeah. the chicken into this protein producing thing that everyone loved. No, they, they look like Hans and Franz chickens. Yeah, they're now. insane. They're, they love like tits. In the 1990s, chicken passed beef as America's favorite meat. And the cows were like, what's up? Yeah. Selecting breeding has made the, the, the chickens so docile that even if chickens are given access, access to outdoor space, a marketing don't, device don't. that qualifies the resulting meat to be sold as free range. Uh-huh. So they just have to open the door oh, to the I've always kind of wondered. Well, I know that it's bullshit, but it's I bullshit. wasn't sure exactly how it was bullshit. Yeah, they just open the door and they go, look, they're free range. But okay. the chickens are like, we don't even know what that so is. So like if you had an agoraphobic and you open the door, you could be like, he's a social butterfly. Yeah, that's what these chickens are. They're agoraphobic because they, they're so, they've been so fucked up for so many years that it, you open the door now and they're like, what's that? Yeah. That's where you naturally should be. Yeah, like, I don't yeah. know what you're talking about, mm. man. We've been, my family's been in, in a warehouse for like 34 generations. Yeah. And well, and you know, you ever, you know, the machine that like picks them up before they go to slaughter. Yeah. You ever seen that thing? Yeah. That to me is one of like the worst looking devices ever. Yeah, it's horrifying. <laughs> Looks like um, a murder car wash. So when they are given access to outdoor space, they prefer hanging out, at the me- mechanized trough waiting for the next delivery of food. We basically made chickens Americans. That's what I'm talking about. Chickens used to be great browsers, but they can't do that. All they want to do now is eat. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It is hard to believe that these animals awaiting their turn in the fryer are the same animals that were worshipped in many parts of the ancient world for their fighting prowess and believed by the Romans to be a direct communication with fate. It's hard to believe, that is, until you hear the story of Mike. Oh, boy. Mike the chicken. (laughs) Okay. Mike was a chicken. (laughs) Yeah. On September 10th, 1945, he died. That was a quick story. And that's where our story begins. (laughs) Whoa. He was a plump five-year-old cockerel. When he was beheaded on the 10th of September, 1945. Okay. It was just a normal act on this farm. Farmer Lloyd Olson of Fruta, Colorado, did the deed because his wife Clara was having her mother over for dinner that night. Well, right? Make a nice meal, right. Well, And Olson knew that his mother-in-law enjoyed a bit of, uh, of the roasted chicken neck. Yeah, right. That was her thing. She liked the neck. Oh, the neck. So she, she was... She enjoyed the neck of the chicken. Right. Okay. So she was a murderer. She's a horrible person. Gotcha. With that in mind, Olsen tried to save most of Mike's neck, so he's trying to kill the bird. Who the fuck wants to eat a chicken neck? I, I don't eat chicken, thing. but... People like, some people like chicken neck. Neck? Neck. Other people eat the feet. The feet-eating people. Some people you eat the whole bird. Okay. Whole fucking bird. I don't eat them. Right. But breast meat was the best but no meat. that's that's the way to go you know yeah. breast meat is fucking, fucking fantastic beaks and claws no it's like a it's like a thing but you know you can also eat the rest of it you can pick away at the feet you or whatever you can eat anything the cool thing about the feet is you can eat it and then pick your teeth with it afterwards <laughs> it's not a cool thing it's pretty cool the only reason to order it is because you can do funny bits uh, at the table with the feet right you know you can kind of do like a Benny and June sort of like dancing yep like a dancing bread roll anything else I think I'm out <laughs> So he tried to save Mike's neck as, as much as he could when ch- cutting off the head, right? Uh-huh. So it's a hard thing to do. So he accidentally made his ac- axe miss Mike's jugular vein plus one ear and most of his brain stem. So he hit him high and he just, he missed the, he basically missed the neck. He got him above the neck area, uh-huh. took off some, some of the head and ear, most of the brain stem. And then to his surprise, Mike didn't die. Mike reeled around like a headless chicken at first, Ugh. right? But then pretty soon he settled down. Yeah, you could, you could calm down, did he? And he even started pecking at the ground for food with his new stump. Wait. And what? making preening motions and letting out throaty gurglings. Uh, this is a terrible story. So Mike, Mike takes a whack. 
and he he gathers himself, and he's basically got no head. He is ba- like, what are we like? What are we talking about? Is he's his pretty, head just kind of like dangling to the side a little bit? I think is it's it hang- in half? I think it's hanging on like like a like a almost like a cuticle. It, they, like there's just a little bit. Maybe the skin is just keeping it together. Ugh. But it's just a head dangling, and he's just a stump. And his upside down head is trying to eat. No, his throat is his his whole his whole area. the The wound is medically trying to speaking. Eat. Oh Christ! Okay, well this is this it's is good. It's okay. good story. Mike reeled around. Oh, I already did that. Olson, uh, the farmer, was bewildered, and so he just left Mike. He was like, "Well, that you took a hit, so I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna let, let you keep doing what you're doing." Crazy decision. The next crazy, crazy decision. The next morning, yeah, it is a crazy decision. Yeah, it's sort of psycho. She liked psychotic. the net. Finish the fucking job. No, it's sort of like a psychopath move. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a fighter. <laughs> I'll let him live a horrible, exi- a tortured life. <laughs> the next morning, when Olson found Mike asleep in the barn. Having attempted to tuck his head under his wing as he always had, mm. the farmer took it upon himself to figure out how to feed this complete monstrosity. What the uh, this farmer <laughs> is a fucking disaster. I don't know. He's pretty sweet. Well, <laughs> he's gonna try and feed the bird. All right. Turned out, all Olson had to do was deposit food and water into Mike's no, exposed no, no. Esoph- esophagus with an eyedropper. He even got small grains of corn sometimes in as a treat. Uh, what? <laughs> what kind of person is uh, lets it play out like this? I don't know. But is he schizophrenic? I maybe. he was like it was he was gonna just take off the neck. He did, and now he's got like now he has a new shaped pet. He has a headless chicken that he's like oh, put some seed in it. It's neck. Yeah, I mean, well, you. When you're presented with new things in life, maybe don't stamp them out. Maybe let them see how they play out. Oh, okay. Good. Maybe he was a religious man. He was like, well, God didn't want this chicken to die. We don't know what the deal was. Uh, yeah, I get... Well, look, you can use religion as any excuse. Okay, so he was religious, so he's a fucking lunatic. Now, the reason Mike survived was because of how his skeleton was shaped. Because a chicken's skull includes two huge holes for holding its eyes in place... Its brain fits snugly into the remaining space at a 45 degree angle, right? So the eyes are Uh here, 45 degree angle. Right. This means you could slice. They're good to scalp. A bit of the brain off. Like if you go clean through this way, Uh you can slice the brain off, right? You go at a 90 degree angle. You go perpendicular. Uh You slice the brain off. And then that means you leave a good portion of the cerebellum and the brainstem that behind. So so you, if you lop straight, you've left a chunk of brain. And that's the chunk of brain that keeps you moving. Like you can take all kinds of hits to the brain, yeah, but if but your brainstem, that's why zombies have to be shot through the brain. But your cerebellum and your brainstem, that's so the thing. So basically that, like it, it is a zombie chicken. It's a, well, it's not a great it's not a great chicken. And it, it's it's not it's not going to be making So his little friend that he's like this is a fighter is really just like an auto I mean well, he's, this thing's dead. But what are chickens anyway? Like it's not like before he was painting. Like he's a chicken. So what's the difference between a chicken that's just got a brainstem left and a chicken that doesn't? Yeah, it's but not I like, think that's the thing, right? Is like you can't just judge the like if that were to be a human, we would be like let's let's end this for this person. Or would we put him in the circus? Well, I I mean obviously if you listen to this podcast, we would take him on a <laughs> fucking world tour. But I'm saying and like Morality wise, yeah. Oh, morality wise, you you like this is not a this is not a good life. I mean, it's I am I am I am not arguing that the life's the chicken's life is a great life or yeah. a good life or even a decent life, but it's a life, man. We wouldn't let it. We wouldn't do this with a human. <clears throat> so you have the, the you have the functioning part alive in the brain that keeps it looking surviving. like it's alive. So it's surviving. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> So Mike's cerebellum was positioned below the massive eye, eye holes and was spared by the axe. So he's basically able to perform his basic motor functions and breathe. He was he was more clumsy because he didn't have eyes. So he would fall over shit. I, I, 
Mike was so unfazed by the whole experience that Farmer Olson decided to hit the road and take his miracle foul on a national tour. Okay. So, <laughs> why? I guess why is really the question, but... but People want to see it, man. What the fuck? People I mean, want to see the. Ch- I would actually, I would actually be interested in seeing that chicken. We're we're done with this phase of history, right? Like we have, <laughs> we have gone. Like it's hard to tell sometimes where we are actually at, but we are definitely out I, of the. I have a horrible disfigured creature. I don't know. What's in the are. road? I don't know if we are. What about the cow at UC Davis? I'm torn with carrot top. The cow at UC Davis, where they took off the side, they took off its side and replaced it with like fiberglass or yeah. plastic that you can see into it so it just tours around or, or it stays at uc davis but anyway people can go in and look and see this well, living honest, cow this is the first i've heard of the fiberglass cow okay um so why don't we well that maybe we'll put be... a pin in that and maybe we dial up that soon because <laughs> that's insane that's fucking insane mike was featured in time magazine and life magazine what the fuck he got his name in the guinness book of world records biggest shithead no biggest Longest life without a head. Like, he's fucking breaking records. He's a record-breaking chicken. And he's popular and people like him. Must have been a fun call to make. To he had us. his own sideshows. Uh, people he, were excited. No, he, the American public no, was excited. No, he did not have his own sideshows. The American public was excited. He was excited. put in a fucking room and people paid money to see. He wasn't like, all right, here's the lineup, gang. All right, you'll do a quick 10 up top. I'll close out. The American public was excited to see Mike the Headless Wonder Chicken, which was his name now. <sighs> Mike even had his own manager who did a great job because he had made Farmer Olsen a fortune. At the height of his fame, Mike was making $4,500 a month and was valued at $10,000, <laughs> which I think is a low valuation if you're making $4,500 a month. We need to stop rewarding a month morons. is a lot more than a lot of people in America make right now. Yes, and that for was 1945. Sure. Yes, but again, I don't think Mike is the one making this money. Well, he probably had nicer digs, it, but he, he didn't fucking treated, know. He, he was a goddamn zombie chicken. <laughs> he didn't have any fucking eye. He wasn't like, ooh, new shoes. He's probably being treated so much better than. But he's brain dead. <laughs> he's not like, oh, nice bubble bath. His success resulted in a wave of copycat chicken beheadings. Oh, Christ. Though none of the unfortunate victims live more than a day or two. Uh, th- that, okay. Because think, Mike was special. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, he was fucking special. I mean, that is just... Uh. So there's a people all over the country trying to make chick- mics. I know what I want to do with my life. <laughs> I want to shred a chicken's brain and hit the road for a few months. Now, of course, Mike had no idea what was going on. Hey, it's me, Mike. There were many photos taken. As Cheese. Pa- as part of the sideshow where Olsen or his manager would hold up Mike's dried, severed head next to his neck. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm really, I, I'm really just, I'm trying to get this visual in my uh-huh. head of what this fucking thing. <laughs> Say what you just said again for me. There are many photos taken as part of the sideshow. uh uh-uh. Where Farmer Olson or his manager would hold up Mike's dried, severed head next to his neck, so they would hold up they would hold up the chicken with it was just got like a, a head stump, and then they would hold up the head and like the like, head that because he's lost the head that's not really not a fresh head right at this point it's been out there a while the crispy yeah it's a little crispy dried jerky yeah it's not a good head head although it turns out it wasn't even Mike's head. The truth, the truth was that Olsen's cat had actually ran off with Mike's original head, so they were using a different head, but no one knew the difference. Uh, I mean, at le- look, if you're going to do this show, uh-huh. at least have some goddamn integrity. Well, I don't know. I don't know if there's any integrity involved in this at all. I don't and think I don't, there... And just, I don't think there's anyone that's going to be like, hey, that ain't Mike's head! Uh, yeah. I knew Mike! Trust me, anyone that's going to see a chicken neck show isn't really going to be like, no, hmm. They want to believe. I've done the math. Yeah. That puzzle piece doesn't fit there. Yeah, they want to believe. Yeah, well, because they all... people have hope, and they... No, and no. They want to believe no, they don't. Can, they want to believe... No, they're fucking idiots. They want to believe... No, they're morons. That things can be true. You want to go downtown to go see a chicken show? This chicken got most of its head cut off, and now it's a wonder chicken. Okay, so this went on for 18 months. Ugh. He's on the road for 18 months, which is hard. 
We've been on the road. It's a fucking rough life being on the Look, road. It's hard enough living out of a suitcase, let alone having a quarter of your brain. Right. The national tour took Mike and his farmer uh, Olson to Phoenix. And as they were hanging out in their motel room, Mike was snacking on some corn bits. I love the way that this is fucking fr- hanging out and Mike snacking. It's just a guy, yeah. a guy on his bed. Mike's dead. And they're watching maybe the Texaco, the Texaco hour. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And and there's just and the and the chicken's just sitting there without a head. Again, Mike's dead. And he's putting corn into the hole. Just a normal thing. Just a farmer feeding just... a neck hole while watching TV in a Super Eight. Right. But then. Mike began to choke. Really? Um, I don't know what it sounds like. Probably when terrifying. A headless chicken is choking. Farmer Olson, to his horror, realized that he'd left the eyedropper at the previous day's show, so he was unable to clear the airways. You have one job at this point. And Mike choked to death. I mean, well, our you know our hearts go out to the family Thank and friends you. of Mike, Thank but you. um. You, you, I mean, if this is if you're if you're if you've locked yourself into some position where you were just going to give a lady a tur- a chicken neck, mm-hmm. and now you have a fucking freak beast that people want to go see. For cash. You just have to remember to fucking keep it alive. You just got to keep the air hole. So open. keep that fucking eye. You have two eye droppers. All you have to have do, a backup. All you have to do is feed it and keep the air hole open. Those are your only jobs. There's two jobs and count money. Three but, jobs. According to the official Mike the Headless Chicken website. What? In the 18 months he spent without his head, he grew from a mere 2.5 pounds to almost 8 pounds. So he was fucking bringing it. Like, this is a chicken no. that was no. flourishing no. without a head. No. Flourishing. No. Living the no. greatest no. times he, he had ever lived. he probably lost the part of his brain that was like, you're full, Mike. You're full. <laughs> that was cut off when this fucking dickhead farmer. Dickhead farmer, this is a chicken... That's making forty five hundred dollars a month and living the life of fucking Riley. Imagine being the... dumb enough to walk yourself ass backwards into having a headless chicken show. In an interview after his death, Farmer Olson said Mike was a quote robust chicken, a fine specimen of a chicken, except for not having a head. He was he was always so prophetic, Farmer Olson. And I gotta say, he was very professional. Mike was a very professional chicken. Dave. Headless chicken. Dave, when you don't have a brain, Mm -hmm. you're probably going to seem like a rule follower. (laughs) (laughs) Farmer Olson took Mike's body to researchers at the University of Utah for an autopsy. And they wanted to study Farmer Olson instead. Who found that a blood clot in Mike's neck had prevented him from bleeding to death when he was beheaded. Okay. So God put a blood clot in there. Probably... The thousands of chickens that were trying to be the copycat chickens. So what I'm going to say to you now is that that brain didn't have a lot of blood going to it in the first place. So maybe he was better off without most of his head. What I'm going to say to you is that your back must hurt from that reach because that's not true. They still love Mike in Colorado. Every third week of May, locals hold an annual Mike the Headless Chicken Festival where they you can enjoy music and contests and food. Which is what Mike would have wanted. No. He liked to eat. No. Especially corn. Yeah. How often do they hold this? Every year. Colorado, Mike the Headless Chicken Festival. (sighs) Well, they should stop. I love Mike. Uh, Look, I love Mike, too. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem like you do. Yeah, no, the farmer's just a dickhead, and I just think you're giving, we're giving this... (laughs) <laughs> this chicken is not a folk hero. It um, had a fuck. I, it's a blood clot. Think, it's basically a walking blood clot. I think we can agree to disagree about how much of a hero he was. He was not a hero. He was. Uh, he was not a hero. <laughs> He's a uh, hero. That's the end of our small uh, about American hero Mike the Chicken. No, the Wonder Chicken, and no, he's a hero. Oh, yes, it's Gareth. Not Gary, stop it. Gare Force, listen, I've got a bunch of stand-up shows coming up, and I want to see you there. We can hug. Uh, I will be at Rooster Tea Feathers in Sunnyvale, California, April 18th, 19th, and 20th. Then I will be in Chattanooga, Tennessee, June 18th. I will be at Nashville at Zanies, June 19th. I will be in Huntsville, Alabama, June 20th. I'll be in Atlanta, Georgia, June 21st, June 22nd. Then I will be in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, 
June 26th. Then I'll be in East Providence, Rhode Island, June 27th. Then I'll be in Boston, Massachusetts, and Boston, June 28th. Uh, That's two shows. I will be in Springfield, Massachusetts, June 29th, Rochester, New York, June 30th, and then July 5th through the 6th, Canada, I've heard your prayers, and I will answer them. I will be in Toronto. So come join me at the Comedy Bar. Go to GarethReynolds.com for tickets and information. That's right, Gareth Force. We're calling you up. It's the big time. It's the big leagues. This went poorly. Woodley's Fine Furniture, specializing in handcrafted Colorado-made furniture, custom upholstery, solid wood, and the most comfortable leather furniture imaginable. You will not find better built furniture in Colorado than at Woodley's. And how great is this? Woodley's has many designers on site who can help in-store or are available for an in-home design visit. Complimentary. Woodley's design professionals are always eager to help with all your design needs. Visit woodleys.com and browse thousands of different furniture ideas.